Please welcome to the stage Matthias Lichtenthaler, Head of Digital Transformation at Austrian Federal Computing Center. Please, big round of applause. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, there was some kind of misunderstanding internal communication, so that should probably be digitized so that uh, that kind of misunderstanding is not going to happen again. But if something's in the calendar for 11 a.m., then it's in there, you know, and you need to switch it and verify it. So that's um, in, maybe in this case a, a information bot or actually a contradiction bot could help because it would figure out that I have something in my Outlook calendar for 11 a.m. And in the program of the conference, it says 10.15. So that's a contradiction. Is that right? I mean, at least that's the, the purpose of the entire contradiction, but that's what I'm going to talk about, is it is a possible contradiction. It's a possible way of potentially verifying that there's an issue, that there's an irregularity. Is there a... Huh? Okay, yeah. Um, so the, the, the human being typically needs to figure out whether this is really a irregularity. In the case of the calendar issue this morning, it would have been a relatively obvious contradiction, relatively obvious type of ir irregularity. But if it's a vast amount of information, not just two single entries, uh, then it's definitely much more effort to figure it out. Then you would have to read through a lot, so tons of documentation to figure out that there is actually a contradiction. And if we are talking about, ah, okay, thank you. If we are talking about actual contradictions, for example, in a criminal case, these guys acting criminal, they would typically not try to be as precise. They would kind of work around the fact to a certain extent if, we, if it gets to fraud, for example. They would not be absolutely that precise that it's really easy to figure out the contradiction, they would put a little more criminal energy in it that it's much harder to figure it out. That there's actually a, let's say, irregularity. And irregularity is more, probably a little more, you know, something neutral, more or less. So if we're looking at what we really want to do, why would we need information bots, why would we need contradiction bots? Because we want to be on the same page. We want to manage and present information in a way that it's really going to fit. And for example, cross-country tax fraud, is, it could be an issue. Uh, you might necessarily not uh, take the same words, the same terminology, to sell something illegal, for example. But artificial intelligence, and that's the topic of this conference, artificial intelligence can figure out irregularities if, if, even if they're using different terms. And it can use terminology, it can use experiences, patterns, to figure out those kind of activities. Example in, in tax fraud would be, there is a offer. Let's say you would offer some kind of services. Oh, it's not you, it's some criminal suspect, you know. They would offer something for 100,000 euros. The, the, the offer might be fine, nothing to criticize. But then there is a... Some, some couple weeks later, there's going to be a contract all of a sudden pointing out 200,000 euros for the same kind of services. Yeah, probably you are smart enough or the criminal suspect is smart enough not to call it exactly the same. They would, you know, manipulate that a little so that it doesn't exactly look the same and uh, 
then a contradiction bot could work in a sense. A bot would identify and analyze re research through all the, acti the activities. And in a text fraud case, this can be actual real activities, corresponding emails, and so forth. It co could also be, as we call it, a non-activity. A non-activity is also a subject to artificial intelligence. You would say, how, how is that going to work? Yeah, if there was no communication between the offer and the actual contract, that's also suspicious. Is that right? Because all of a sudden, there's 100,000 more of services or 100,000 more of value of services in the contract, which was never negotiated, and there was no commu or very little communication between the offer uh, um, date and, and the actual appointment of signing the contract. Why is there no communication? That's suspicious because there had been obviously some communication, but, but uh, with the interest of as little as much as co uh, documentation as necessary. You would communicate in different formats, not in email, not writing letters. Uh, you would meet somewhere suspiciously to, to talk about that. And so a not documentation is also an interesting information. That's something we're using to find out irregularities. And that's also the, 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 the goal of all this, is to be on the same page, to understand what's in there. So that's a, a common goal. And obviously, the next aspect of a information and trans a contradiction bot is full transparency. You want to understand what's really going on. I know that transparency might sound a little odd if you're, let's say, at the airport and they're, you, they're screening you. That type of transparency is probably something you wouldn't necessarily appreciate. But transparency in regards to information is more than just real facts instead of alternative ones. It's understanding a vast amount understanding the consequences out of a vast amount of information. That's a typical case for the public sector, where you have new documentation coming, uh, coming in. You would receive a letter with some information. Let's say somebody would point out, in this and that particular case, it happened this and that way. And then, you might have some time without artificial intelligence, without the bot, to read through the entire existing documentation for the next two weeks to figure out that on, on page 1,225, there's actual contradiction to this new information. That's contradictory. In the, uh, on page 1,225, there's something saying totally different, 100%, 180% different to what was being stated in the new documentation. So certainly a human being is able to find that contradiction if you had the time to actually read through the documentation for the next two weeks, or even sometimes like two or three days are inappropriate, you, ha you would have to make a decision now. And so this type of contextualization, putting the new information in context to the existing documentation is already an improvement. That's something the contradiction bot can do. And the contradiction bot can do even more than that. Due to the fact that the contradiction bot is going to put that into context, it, it can also validate other existing information, not just open government data. It could also utilize information like from the newspaper, you would say, ah, well, news is lying anyway, so we, we don't trust that. Well, we, we had a case in which there was a similar fraud case um, from another lady in another state of, uh, um, uh, state of Austria. And this lady's na last name was different to the other guy, in, in this case in Salzburg, who did a similar who committed a similar type of fraud activity. It was actually a real disabled subsidy um, fraud. 
So pretending that you are employing disabled people and receiving subsidies, so it's a really bad case, you know, really bad, pretending to employ disabled people. So there had been a similar case in a state, a very similar case in a different state, but the two suspects had different last names, so nobody got the connection, nobody got the context. But then there was a little notification in a newspaper in Tirolia saying that Mr. A married Mrs. B. And all of a sudden they have the same last name. Wow. That was totally disconnected to the fraud case. But now all of a sudden they had the, the reason to investigate these two cases even more closely. And then they figured out, okay, these guys know each other. <laughs> it's more than just knowing each other. They're actually married now, which, hadn't, which was not the fact last year when, when the initial case w was coming up in Tyrolia. So that's something where you uh, would put even additional information in, into context. Today, in the public sector, the, the challenge is that you would have a lot of work already to put a new information into context with the existing documentation. But rarely, or in very, very few cases, people would actually verify other existing information. And that's, that's the, the benefit of having a bot who would identify any existing information. And one final aspect of the contradiction but can be, if you allow that, Specifically, if it's a criminal case, and if there's substantial criminal energy, and if there's, a, so to say, as we say, danger ahead. If there's a, a critical case, and in this critical case, GDPR, data security, might not be the first priority because you have to save lives or any other serious damage. In this particular case, you can act in a little bit of a different way, as you probably know. And the, a bot can help. What, what can a bot in this case actually do? The contradiction bot or the information bot can be allowed to flip through information which is typically disclosed, so um, which is or which is not dis uh, which is not disclosed to the public, which is secret. Yeah, it can um, we uh, in in a in a criminal environment they call it a poison cabinet. That's something which you would. Uh, that's a little cabinet you would find, a little box uh, in each and every hospital or in a, in a pharmacy where there are specific drugs and, uh, and uh, they're locked in there and only very few people would have access to these drugs. If you transfer this to the digital approach, um, it's actually not re a, a physical poison a cabinet, but it is a digital poison cabinet. It's kind of a vault where only few people, in parenthesis, human beings, would have access to. So in case of, in, in case of a specific dangerous situation, uh, the one who's investigating here would typically not be able to flip through this poison uh, cabinet, even though it might contain actual relevant information for this case and time is running eventually. So here, the advantage of a bot is that the bot can identify, based upon metadata, identify relevant information in this poison cabinet. And if so, it can extract that information. And then it might initially not uh, provide or retrieve the information immediately it might be subject to additional investigation or additional confirmations um, by a judge, for example, who would have to say, okay, this is a real case of danger for life, and that's why we're allowed to use this poison data, so to say. And that's a particular case where the bot is even better in a, in a sense that the, the bot can't look around in this database. The bot only has one purpose to find information based upon that metadata. And if so, it would say yes. And then 
the, the public prosecution, for example, can decide whether it's appropriate to use that information. Um, but and if, it, if the bot wouldn't find appropriate information, it would just not even say anything, so to say. So in this, in this case, the bot can have additional functionality beyond just being a bot re uh, flipping through information. It, that's the link between artificial intelligence and robotics and process automation. I think that's something you've probably seen at this, at this conference already quite, uh, quite frequently. And you've seen that there, is, there are opportunities to utilize that. I know that um, any, uh, any um, robotics and process aut automation might be scary because you feel like you're losing control. I mean, robotics process automation in terms of uh, regular copy-paste jobs to be substituted, to be uh, moved over to a, to a robot, is some, robot is something which is easy and, and not, not a big deal. If it gets more intelligent in, in, into artificial process support, machine learning, artificial intelligence, if the, if the robot is supposed to have a little more intelligence in it, it might be you know, something scary. I understand that. Because you feel like the robot can create its, his or her or its own life, can turn into something uncontrollable by mankind. And that's the, the difficult part of it. But it is possible to control robotics and process automation by, by human beings and, for example, to use it for um, for flipping through poison cabinets with the advantage that the, as I said, the robot only has one task to get in there. If, if there's relevant information, it would retrieve that. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. And a human being would be interested, oh, this is an interesting database. There's some celebrities in here. I, I'm going to have a look around who's in here in this database. For example, if it's, if it's data if it's uh, clinical data or, or any, any really sensitive data, it might be really interesting to look through who's in there. A robot has no human understanding in that regard. It, or it would just retrieve the relevant information. That's the advantage of a bot. So I, I know that at this conference and other conferences, we, we talk a lot, a lot about chatbots. That's fine, and that's reasonable. In our case, in the public sector, uh, the citizen-state um, interaction is quite important. Also, the corporate state interaction in, uh, is important, and, and chatbots can help, for sure. But even on a different level, a information and or a contradiction bot can help. So if you look at a general cognitive platform which contains already a lot of information. And that's probably more than just this lever arc file you were looking, this digital lever arc file you were looking at. It already has access to a variety of different open, govern open government data, other information. Um, it could also be connected to, for example, information from a newspaper. Even though you would not necessarily gu uh, guarantee that the uh, that the information in the newspaper is correct. But in the case I mentioned, this advertisement, we got married, yeah, it might be, might be fraud as well, but I mean, in this case, it's typically relevant information um, in, in the newspaper. So that was something which is logically connected uh, to an existing case. So that's more than just the existing documentation. It is uh, connected uh, to a particular case. So a contradiction, contradiction bot can uh, spec identify specific um, anomalies. Um, and this comprehensive comparison is, as I said, more than just flipping through the, through the initial information. And that's a strong power of, our, of artificial intelligence. It can be much faster. But it can also learn, and, I, and that's the, my final comment on, on learning, is, as I said, the human being has to decide whether it's really a contradiction, 
or whether the information is really relevant uh, or not. And if, if you are deciding, if you're deciding that you would not take that opportunity to say this is a contradiction, then you have to come up with some reasonings, with some, some explanation why you as a human being would not follow that on the silver platter. You would say, in this particular case, it's not a contradiction, and I'm telling you why. And this why is excellent information for the machine to learn why this was, in this particular case, not actually a contradiction. So the human being is always, as you know, uh, an excellent input for enhancing the information in the system. So I hope that that was sufficient as information on, on our understanding of a contradiction bot. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be here for a little while, so if you had any other questions, uh, happy to answer that. Um, and you would probably imagine that this is not only relevant for the public sector, but also for the private sector. Thanks so far. Thank you.